This is In the Trenches, Broadcast 8. Welcome to In the Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. Today's guest is a friend and mentor of mine, Jonathan Mead. Jonathan is the founder of Pay to Exist, an online resource where you can learn to live life on your own terms, create a successful business online from scratch, and reclaim your freedom. Jonathan's been busy the last few years helping people find meaning in their work by creating life-changing in-depth courses like Trailblazer and the Job Escape Kit, both of which I've used and highly recommend. So Jonathan, thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, thank you, Tom. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk with you today. Absolutely. So honestly, I guess I'd like to take it right from there. Um, uh, as far as these programs you're, you've created, um, we'll get into those in a bit, sure. but I'd like to start at the beginning, kind of, why and how did you get into the online business world? Yeah, I, I guess I guess the the biggest reason I I got into the internet space um, and started doing this work was mainly because I I was just dissatisfied with with uh, the you know I guess I would call it the standard model of work, which is um, you know work work to survive, work to to pay the bills, and um, you know we have this uh, we have this saying that's called the cost of living, and that's that's kind of how most people feel, right? They they do work to um, afford living, and I mm-hmm. I just felt like that was uh, there's something wrong with that, and there's something wrong with the way our world views work, and I I started to make it my mission to you know build uh, a business where I can help other people find meaning and and joy and satisfaction in work, so. We can start to transform the landscape of, you know, this standard model, uh, one person at a time, and and hopefully get to the point where we create enough of a tipping point where we can tra- not just transform a few people's lives, but tr- transform that default model to something different, and something more, more founded in in joy and freedom and purpose, and and really following your calling and giving your gifts to the world rather than feeling like it's just some obligation that you have to that you have to subscribe to in order to just live. Absolutely. And that's definitely a message that resonates with me. Um, Obviously, as a a Trailblazer member myself, um, I I definitely resonate with your message and what you're doing with Paid to Exist. I also think that from the people I've talked to who are a part of it, too, it it seems like like across the board a message that resonates with people. So as far as that's concerned, did you know that it would? Did you know that, uh, I guess, doing what you're doing with Pay to Exist and, and what you're doing online helping people, did you know, I guess, before you started that it would help so many people? Yeah, you know, when I first started out, really, um, I think like a lot of people when they start out, it's it's about them and and they just want to liberate themselves. They just want to create freedom for themselves. And over... Over time, you know, I, I originally started my my business solely around just personal development, and in the beginning, mm-hmm. it wasn't about um, helping people find their passion or or start businesses. and And after I quit my job, I started doing coaching, and just people kept coming to me over and over for advice on the, on this topic, like how can they find what's meaningful to them? How can they find something that they can devote their lives to? And you know make their, you know, make their children proud of them, make their family proud of them. And, and that's, that's kind of how I was pulled into this, into this purpose. And as I started to notice, you know, more and more people, like 90% of the people that were coming to me for coaching wanted help with this. And I kind Mm -hmm. of, uh, I kind of, uh, was forced into this purpose, uh, in, in some ways, because I, I originally didn't have any intention for it to be about this. And then I just sure. realized that um, entrepreneurship is is one of the biggest vehicles for personal growth that I know of, um, probably second to maybe relationships 
and intimate relationships and, and, and things like that. Um, so as, as I, as people started coming to me with this and as I started to see, you know, this could be a huge, huge, uh, vehicle for, for personal growth. That's when I really started to see, you know, this is something huge and there's a lot of people out there that, you know, realize that this isn't the way they have to live and they just, they just don't know what to do instead. And that's what kind of fueled me to, to really step into my purpose fully with this and, and kind of take things to the next level, you know? Uh, yeah, that's awesome. A couple of things that really stood out to me was how you mentioned it didn't start out the way it is right now. So clearly right. where you're at right now is, is an evolution um, of where you started. And I think that's important. I think for people to understand is it doesn't, you know, you see a uh, pay to exist or something like that. That's obviously like very high quality. Um, it's got a very specific purpose to it. Um, and it's not necessarily that you started out that way, but right. that you, that little by little you were able to build it. Yeah. I would say it's, you know, it's kind of like planting a seed, you know, you know, you mm-hmm. kind of know what that seed is generally is um when you first plant it but you don't know exactly what it's going to to turn into or what it's going to grow into over time and um i think a lot of people they want they want the tree first and yeah exactly and uh you know so you a lot of times you just have to start with that seed and just keep nourishing it keep nurturing it and and allow it to to grow and allow it to be you know to be uh, evolving with that, with that process of, of unfolding, you know, because you're not always going to know right from the beginning exactly what it's going to be. I mean, I think, I don't think that should be an excuse for not having a direction or not having clarity on, on what you want to create. Um, sure. But I think uh, a lot of times people get paralyzed because they're trying to have everything figured out right from the beginning. And, you know, it, even if you did have that, that would kind of suck because that would take yeah. all the fun out of it. Exactly. Uh, I totally agree. Not to mention, I love that that point about people wanting the tree first. I know because I was in that for a long time, that that kind of position of yeah. saying to myself, well, this is this is what I want, you know, whether it's like one of the things I've always thought to myself is that, you know, I want to be a published author, right? I want to write, you know, a book that's that's worth reading yeah. or, or, or rather not write it. I just want to be the person to have written it. You know, until you realize and you sit down, and you start writing and you're like, okay, this is way harder than I thought. And it actually takes work and it takes time and it takes effort. So it's a great point. Um, I guess when you were talking about that too, I also wanted to dig into a little bit. You, you mentioned you quit your job. Was that an all in kind of thing? Was it progressive? How'd you transition? Yeah, it wasn't, um, it wasn't just like one day, you know, I hear stories of people where they're just like, one day I woke up and I realized I couldn't do this anymore and I quit and I didn't have mm-hmm. a plan or anything like that. It wasn't, it wasn't like that for me. You know, I'm, I'm kind of risk averse and I'm, I, I tend to take things, uh, very strategically and that's just kind of my personality. Absolutely. Um, I know a lot of people that they're just like, Hey, I'm moving to, uh, I'm moving to Spain and they just decided <laughs> that one day. And that's, yeah. that's not, that's not the way that I, that I function like that gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, so for me, it was, you know, I had a full time job. Um, and I was, you know, I was building my business on the side over time. And I had set a date, you know, I want to quit my job in a year. And throughout that year, I, I did certain things to, to make that a reality. You know, it mm-hmm. was, uh, you know, creating a, a freedom fund or a safety net of like, you know, three months of expenses just in case something doesn't work out. But more than that, it was, uh, it was replacing my job income over time. Exactly. And having a, pre- like as much of a predictable income stream as I could, as I could create, you know, when you're building a business and you don't have recurring revenue right away, it's always going to be a little bit, uh, unpredictable, but I wanted to have a track record of, you know, I, uh, you know, over a course of three to six months, I was predictably replacing my job income. So not, not only did, did that give me security and like, you know, a feeling of like, yes, I can do this, but it also helped me build that, uh, that savings a lot faster, um, yeah. being able to do that. So that's, that's kind of the approach that I took. And, um, you know, I, I think that's, that's, the best approach for most people. Cause I see a lot of people quit their jobs just on a whim and then, mm-hmm. you know, they don't have a plan. They don't know what they're doing. And then, you know, they have no business experience whatsoever, no experience on how to make money on their own. 
And then they end up going back to finding another job like six months yeah. later and they're like, they're all discouraged and, and stuff. And I don't think you have to do it that way. No, absolutely not. And I think that's an interesting story too. I think it gives you, um, again, uh, more, I guess, e- the expertise, the personal expertise to bring products like and courses like Trailblazer and the Job Escape Kit to market. Um, obviously, you you being a strategic person and, and kind of meticulous in your planning and making sure you had that uh, stepping off point from you know job to uh, right to entrepreneurship uh, it gives you I think great insight into that. And, and so, as somebody who uses the Job Escape Kit right now, I found it um, really detailed and a really great course that uh, I think is super helpful. And I would recommend to just about anybody looking to get into the online. Um, business world. Same thing with Trailblazer, of course. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and um, you know, one of one of the other things that I did too was uh, I scaled back my work uh, mm-hmm. job too. So I, I I went from forty hours a week to thirty hours a week, and that that helped me as well. Like just having one more day a week that you can just devote to your business, I think can be can be huge. You know, so mm-hmm. any anything you can do to transition, um, you know. Uh, progressively, I think can be can be really valuable. You know, you don't go into the gym without having ever worked out in like five years, and then just start bench pressing like two hundred pounds. Sure. You know? exactly. A question I've had for you then, uh, looking at some of the products you've created and the stuff you've you've done, what fuels your creativity? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing that fuels my creativity is creating experiences for people Mm -hmm. that create transformation, you know? So I'm always thinking about when I'm creating a product or I'm working on a, you know, a a brand or I'm working on a new business or something like that. I'm thinking about how can I create an experience that people are immersed in and they want to be a part of it. And it's just like this fun kind of like, it's like an an adventure going into it. And then also like, um, how do you create transformation? Like what is, what are, what are the tools you can offer people that create the most transformation, the highest likelihood of success, you know? So when I, when I create stuff, I like to have a lot of case studies. I like to have a lot of detailed information of what other people have done. I like to, you know, make implementation as easy as possible, like mm-hmm. giving people checklists, giving people accountability, giving people coaching, just basically setting things up as much as possible for someone to succeed. Um, and even still, you know, that's even when you do all those things, you still have to let go to a certain degree because a lot of people mm-hmm. just don't, they don't follow through with things and you can, you know, you can uh, lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, but you can do as much as possible right. to make like drinking easy, really damn easy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sure. I totally agree. Very cool. So, when you did your your transition in, into um, the the online space, and even now, um, I'm sure you probably came up uh, against a lot of fear, uh, possibly uncertainty. Uh, would you mind diving into that a little bit? Did you have any fears when you first started out? And also, do you still have fears to this day? At at even at this level of success that you've had thus far, do you still experience any uncertainty or fear? Oh yeah, I mean a- absolutely. So when I was when I was working um, when I was working in my job and I had just made the decision to quit and I handed him my two week notice, I was I was terrified. You know, I mean, yeah. I I didn't know like I had some success, but I didn't know if I could do it, you know, reliably over time. And um, you know, I I uh, I think one of, one of my I guess. Uh, qualities that I have that I think is a, is a strength is whenever I have uncertainty or, or fear, like my, my immediate response is, is to just like hustle like a madman mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and to just buckle down and figure out like, okay, what do I need to do to make this, what do I need to do to make this happen? And I, I mm-hmm. try to think in terms of ways, like how could I make this like impossible to fail or not just like it's of course that's like um you know something that you can't always reach like you can't always make things impossible but you can uh you can set things up where the odds are so overwhelmingly in your favor that yeah. the chances for failure are like ridiculously small you know like um i i know you're you're really into like uh military metaphors and one of the 
one of the metaphors, or uh, not metaphors, but um, quotes, I guess, that really sticks out to me from uh, Sun Tzu, The Art of War. He says, right. the victorious, uh, what is it, v- victorious general doesn't, doesn't go into battle and then try to c- claim victory. He is victorious and then he goes into battle. You know, so right. he only enters battle after the victory has been won. Mm-hmm. And that's the approach I, I try to take when I take on new projects and I, and, I, sure. and I do things like, how can I get victory first and then, and then start engaging, you know? That's, and that's awesome. I mean, I think it's a great quote, very applicable. My question then would be, how do you determine uh, what is victorious before you go into battle? What do you look at then in terms of how you can set yourself up for uh, as much success as possible? Right. Yeah. Well, for me, it, it always has to start with like, can I pour my whole self into this mm-hmm. and can I like give myself completely to this and feel like great about it, whether, like whether or not it succeeds, because if I can do that, then I can, you know, I can give everything and feel great about it no matter what. And that's the biggest, the biggest first requirement and like litmus test for me. Can I, can mm-hmm. I go into this and, 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 give everything. Am I doing this because I'm feeling pulled to it because I'm excited about it? Not because I just think it's a good opportunity, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's, it would be really easy for me to just in my business to just decide to do things because they're good opportunities. And and then like my energy is not aligned with it and I'm going to feel like strained the whole time. And I'm going to feel like I'm having to force myself to do things that like I honestly am half hearted about. Right. So that's the first thing. Like, can I, can I feel good about doing this, whether or not I succeed? Um, and then, you know, like I'm a, I'm a big believer, you know, in, in testing things in in business, but I'm also a big believer in intuition. So like, do does this just feel right? Like, does it feel like, like this makes sense? Does it feel like, um, like this is something, you know, my people would want, and, mm-hmm. and then like, I start to ask questions like, so I'm working on a new, I'm working on a brand new business right now with, um, a business partner. And, w- you know, w- we ask, uh, we've been asking ourselves a lot of questions of things like, what are the mm-hmm. major problems, um, that our audience has and right. you know, does, does this solve those specific problems? Um, are they aware that they have these problems? Because if they're not aware of it or they're not aware of their pain, then they're not going to want it. So asking, asking a lot of questions like, you know, I guess back to that uh, military metaphor, like there's mm-hmm. probably, I, I'm, you know, I've never been in the military or anything, but I imagine there's a lot of like uh, playing out potential scenarios uh, of things. And um, mm-hmm. that's something I do a lot. Like what would happen if, like this happened or, you know, what if this breaks or, um, yep. like what if people respond like this? Like how can we address potential objections in advance? So doing things like that, um, are, are some of the things that I do like to try to mitigate, um, you know, my fear, mitigate, uh, you know, the potential risks involved in, in doing something new. Sure. No, I think that's an excellent point. And war gaming is is totally essential, especially for uh, startup. The uncertainty that's involved. I, obviously, you can't. I'm sure you can't cover everything with those questions, but you can you can attack your idea from as many angles as possible to try to make it bulletproof. Right. Yeah. If you just like attack the shit out of it and it yeah. doesn't break, then that's a pretty good sign, right? Absolutely. So, what has been the most difficult point for you in terms of what you've been doing online, uh, and that could be in terms of, say, growth or in terms of creating something? Yeah, you know, I, I think I think one of the 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 biggest challenges when you've been doing something for a significant amount of time, like we we've been doing this business for five years now, or sure. I, you know, I. It wasn't always a team of people, but I've I've been doing this for five years now. And one of the biggest challenges is like, how do you keep things interesting, exciting, and and fun? Like, because it's mm-hmm. easy after you've just been going at things for a while, it's easy to get stuck in plateaus and yeah. just feel like 
oh, we're doing pretty good. Like, why should we, why should we try to change things? You know, like we're doing mm-hmm. pretty good. Um, and I think there's a time for like enjoying your successes and locking in your gains and, and just like, mm-hmm. like reveling in the fruits of your labor. But if you do that mm-hmm. for too long, then you get stagnant and, and yep. growth stops and, and then you start to feel like, eh, like, why am I really doing this? I can just coast for, for a while. And then when you coast too long, like, then it starts to not work because you, yeah. you've, like, what, you, what got you to where you are was, was that kind of, like, um, you know, seeking and adventurous, and how uh-huh. can I improve things mindset. And uh, I think that's one, of the, that's one of the challenges that I have sometimes is, like, you know, how do I keep things fresh interesting and and exciting and that that for me involves you know like um just like doing experiments like not yeah like one of the one of the challenges like when you've been doing something for a while it's it's easy to think like oh well this has worked so why why change it like if we change it it could right. break and then we could screw ourselves so doing things like and approaching them as experiments and just like, Hey, we're just going to try this. Um, and we're going to devote a certain percentage of our time to just doing fun, interesting experiments and challenges and like creating like an interesting user experiment or experience or something Mm -hmm. where we don't know what's going to happen. Like doing stuff like that, I think helps, helps keep you fresh. Also, you know, just connecting with new people and getting ideas from people outside of your niche is uh, incredibly important because sometimes you just like you're seeing the same people do the same things over and over and it just that just like reinforces the status quo and you have to you have to just connect with um, different people you know outside of your your typical sphere yeah I remember actually talking with you a a couple months ago I think it was and you had mentioned uh, a, a really cool idea and then I think I saw you write about it on another website it was the echo chamber, I think you refer to it as like online when you read a lot of material and it just seems that people are kind of regurgitating the same yep. stuff. Yeah. And so I, I'm pretty sure you came up with that. I think it's just a great point though. I think that's, it's kind of almost disheartening sometimes when you read all the same stuff again and again, and you're like, Jesus, everything's just going to be a regurgitation of what came before it. So it is refreshing to see somebody, you know, actively try to push new material, actively try to reinvent something or, or just evolve something or just completely revolutionize something. Right. Yep. So then I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up with this last question. If you have any, one piece of advice for the person in the trenches you know, doing the hard creative work, trying to live life on their own terms, what would it be? Somebody just starting out or somebody who's been grinding out maybe for a year or two? I would say, you know, um, really, 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 really focus on like what, what, kind of, um, what kind of life do I want my business to support and Mm -hmm. how can I, how could I cultivate that? And are, are the things that I'm doing like really improving my, like my immediate experiment or immediate experience? Because so many people, they, they end up like working to build a business or working to escape a job or something like that. And they just, end up actually trading like um one one prison for another one cage for another like yeah it just so happens that their cage is like decorated a little bit better or or, you know like they come and go as they please but you know that's like or they have more i don't know rec time or some something like that but honestly if you if you really want to create something different you have to be present about that question like what type of Life, do I want my business to support? And asking that, being honest with yourself, like, are these, am I taking on these projects or these, you know, these things that I want to do because they're something I'm really interested and passionate about? Or am I just trying to do what everyone else is doing and follow the opportunities that seem like a good idea for me? And, you know, really, it's not easy, but really be honest with yourself about that because not, not only is that going to make you happy now, but it's also going to set you apart because so many people are just like you, like we were just talking about. They're just doing the same things that everyone else is doing in their niche and they're regurgitating the same stuff. And if you're the one not doing that, then you're going to stand out uh, head and shoulders above the rest. Awesome. 
Great point to end on. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan, for being here with us today and for this great conversation. I I, I definitely think people will respond positively to this. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. It's been a pleasure. And that wraps up In the Trenches Broadcast 8. I thought it was a really incredible interview, and I hope you did too. If you're interested in the show notes, check out tomworkus.com backslash broadcast 8, and that's the number 8. This is Tom Workus. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Thank you for listening to In the Trenches. Your creative work doesn't stop here. Join the resistance, the small but growing army of entrepreneurs and artists putting a dent in the world at www.tommorkis.com. Never fight alone. Join the resistance.